morning everyone, uh, you're very welcome here to St. Aidan's Parish Church, Salters Grange, Sunday the 31st of January, it's the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany, and we just pray that you're really blessed uh, as you join us this morning, no matter where it is that you're joining us uh, from. Oh, I want to mention just at this point that this is a pre-recorded service, we're recording this uh, midweek, and uh, the reason why I tell you that is in case there's been something has happened uh, during time we've recorded this and the time that it's actually aired something significant may have happened and, and you're wondering why I'm not mentioning it and, and that's really the the reason why so I just wanted to let you know that uh, in terms of announcements I want to mention something really important on Saturday the 13th of February uh, we'll have a sit-in in, in um, both our churches in St. Aidan's from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock and from St. Luke's in St. Luke's from 1 o'clock to two o'clock and that's to receive your free will offering um, envelopes your building fund envelopes and your food bank donations as well so would you would you please take note of that saturday the 13th of february 12 to 1 here 1 to 2 over in st luke's um, church hall our service this morning is a service of the word a special service of the word in the time of coronavirus this time that we're um journeying through these challenging days and uh you know i just really commend it to you it's wonderful liturgy i will use it again next month and i really do pray that you'll be you'll be blessed if you really just um just listen in on this service and just take to heart everything that's being said i think that's basically all i have in terms of uh, announcements apart from just one other thing a special birthday during the week uh our very own church warden here charlie coulter He's reached the ripe old age, believe it or not, of 85. Uh, no, sorry, I mean uh, 65. Sorry, I wrote that down wrong. It's, it's 60, Charlie's 65. So I just want to say uh, a big happy birthday to Charlie. Charlie, I hope you're, um, hope you're watching this, for starters. <laughs> I hope uh, you had a really good day. Uh, happy birthday to you. Okay, so we're here to worship the Lord and uh, offer our praise and our thanksgiving to him. Let's just commit this time. To the Lord in prayer, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come to you. Lord, you invite us to come and to bring to you our worship and our praise and our thanksgiving. Lord, we just pray, Lord, in this service, that we, no matter where we are watching this, Lord, that we would know your presence in a very real way, that we would know your blessing, Lord, that you would minister to each and every one of us. And Lord, if there's anyone with any special need, Lord, that you would move, Lord, in all our hearts in the power of your spirit and just minister to those, most especially uh, who have a particular need um, today, Lord. We delight in the fact that you love us. You sent your son to die for us. And in the power of your spirit, Lord, you can do anything in us and through us. Lord, be pleased with this time of worship. We commit it to you in Jesus' name. And now we're going to sing our opening hymn of worship in our church hymnal. It's hymn number 102, a wonderful hymn, wonderful words, name of all majesty, fathomless mystery.
Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord be with you. And also with you. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. This I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. God of all mercy and compassion, life and death are in your hands. As we gather in this time of illness and infection, of isolation, fear and uncertainty, we are mindful of the sick and those weighed down by pain, distress, loneliness and anxiety. Those who care for them, conscious of the risks they bear and all who have responsibility for public health and social order. We pray that the cry of the afflicted may be heard and that they may be comforted, so that all who suffer may come to know that they are joined to the sufferings of Christ, who gave his life for the salvation of the world, and by your blessing on them and those who care for them, they may be restored according to your will to soundness of body, mind, and spirit, and offer joyful thanks in your church. a time of penitence, seeking the Lord's forgiveness. When we cry out to the Lord in our trouble, he, he will, will deliver, deliver us from all our distress. distress. God will bring us out of darkness into, into his marvellous light. God be merciful to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May your ways be known on earth, your saving grace to all nations. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation and revealed your justice in the sight of the nations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father forgive us and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Almighty God, who forgives, all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now before Neil comes to bring us our gospel reading, I'm reading to you some words from a well-known psalm, Psalm 121, which gives us words of great encouragement and hope. Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not suffer your foot to stumble. He who watches over you will not sleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shield at your right hand so that the sun shall not strike you by day, neither the moon by night. The Lord shall keep you from all evil. It is he who shall keep your soul. The Lord shall keep watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. The Gospel reading is taken from St. Mark, chapter 1, beginning to read at verse 21. Jesus drives out an evil spirit. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The evil spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching? And with authority. He even gives orders to evil spirits, and they obey him. News about him 
spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. Thank you, Dean. Let's pray. Father God, we ask that you would speak to us now in the power of your spirit, Lord. Help us to hear what you would say to us today, if we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> well, when I read our gospel passage for this service, I couldn't help but wonder just what it must have been like to have been in the congregation on that day when Jesus began his public ministry. I mean, it must have been amazing. Here is a man who is not recognised as one of the designated teachers of the law, one of the appointed, educated and respected religious leaders given the authority to teach the people. Those who, when they taught, did so by pointing to Moses or some rabbi or teacher and the authority that was held by them. So like they would say, Moses commanded this law or that this teaching must be obeyed or followed. And here we have Jesus arriving on the scene, taking the pulpit, as it were, as an unknown and proceeding to teach, not pointing to Moses or any other significant scribe or teacher, but teaching by his own authority. Now, it's a bit like someone turning up in church here on a Sunday morning with no introduction and just beginning to preach. Of course, that's not permitted within the Church of Ireland, and rightly so. There are safeguards in place given the significance and importance of God's word and who is permitted to take the pulpit. So I'm sure that some of the congregation here in the synagogue in Capernaum must have been thinking, who are you? Or even, who do you think you are? And by whose authority are you able to teach us? Well, when Jesus begins to speak, he immediately impresses all his listeners, as the passage informs us, that all were amazed at his teaching. Because he spoke with authority, yes, but not like any of the other teachers. Now, I have already mentioned the word authority five times in this short reflection so far. It's a significant term for what we are thinking about this morning. What does it mean? Well, the dictionary definition is this. Power to influence or command thought, opinion or behaviour. In every sphere of our society, we have many people who hold positions of power and authority. How that power is used and exercised varies greatly, however, from individual to individual. And we have countless examples in every sphere of society where power and authority has been misused, misplaced or worse still, abused. And sadly, even as we are well aware, the church has not been immune to those who would use their position of influence and power to manipulate or to mistreat. I think most recently we have been witness also to how power and authority in the wrong hands can be devastating. Donald Trump, the man with no political experience, succeeds in becoming the President of the United States of America and as such the most powerful man on the planet. For many commentators reflecting on his term of office, here was a man who had significant power and authority, achieved through his business endeavors and building the Trump brand name, who sought office simply to accrue more power and authority. He had a track record of abusing his power, to hire and fire at will, to treat people however he chose to without any thought for their feelings, their families, or their future prospects. One journalist wrote the following on new powers that he sought to accrue, even more new powers. Most of the new powers he is claiming are about self-preservation. They arise not out of any public demand, nor out of any desire to accrue powers to the presidency itself. They are almost entirely motivated by personal, seemingly narcissistic reasons. This is in keeping, however, with his view of the presidency, less as a vehicle for any specific policy agenda and more as a vehicle for self-glorification. Trump ran for the presidency for personal reasons and he is expanding its power for personal reasons too. Policy is just not as much of an interest to Trump. Donald Trump, on reflection, provides us with a great example 
of a power-hungry, self-seeking, self-promoting, self-asserting individual whom, it would seem to many, has made himself into a larger-than-life idol. An idol that he is very happy to worship. Jesus begins his ministry as he takes the pulpit in the synagogue, speaking with authority, that is, the power to influence or command thought, opinion or behaviour. He does so as the most powerful and influential person on the planet because he is the Son of God, the one through whom the very world was created. The people are amazed at his words. They will soon be even more amazed by his actions. This is not a self-glorifying authority, but a gentle, compelling authority, and one that will bring healing to so many who are suffering. A man in the synagogue suddenly cries out. He is possessed by an impure spirit. Imagine that someone in church with an impure spirit. How did he get in? We note that Jesus doesn't say, uh, time for you to leave, John. Uh, you're causing a fuss and like you're a bit demon possessed. No, he speaks directly to the man's condition and the spirit which has a hold on him. Jesus uses his power and authority to heal this poor man. A poor man struggling for years, perhaps, against the power of evil at work within him. But at least the poor man knew where to go in the hope of finding release and freedom. And that, my friends, is what our church should be. A place where even those who feel burdened are struggling, whether that be in the form of addiction or mental health issues or disease or illness or whatever, can come and they can come and are happy to come and find healing and release. They will do so as we offer Jesus in faith with his power and authority at work amongst us. Recently, I was watching a TV program on TVN where the man speaking was sharing stories of healing from his experiences of healing on the streets in Korea. His name is Mark Marx, and he instigated this ministry in 2005 from his church at Causeway Coast Vineyard. Perhaps you've maybe heard of them. They have had countless testimonies of people healed from a whole variety of issues, many truly miraculous and astounding. They do this as they exercise authority over the issue or condition, not their own authority, but the authority of this same Jesus who will display mercy and compassion but also the supernatural power of God at work in hurting hearts, minds, and bodies. The kingdom of God has come near, as we reflected on last week, as Jesus announced his arrival on the scene of time. The Father in heaven has given him all authority in heaven and on earth and even under the earth. And the Holy Spirit is upon him. Healing is in his wings and he will eventually go to the cross where he will suffer and take upon himself our sin and shame. But also he will be stripped and beaten and with all that he will endure, we will have access in his name to healing and wholeness and to his saving grace. We're coming to a close. If we will just have the faith to believe, to receive, and to exercise his authority over every situation and circumstance, every illness and addiction, over every disease and every intention of the devil. We understand that when God answers prayer, he does so, we know this, in, in three different ways. The answer is either yes, no, or not now. Not everyone receives healing, we know that, we understand that. God is sovereign, he is in charge. But we must pray with greater boldness, greater faith. If we do so, we will see amazing answers to our prayers. I know this because it has been my own experience. As believers in and followers of Jesus, we can exercise his authority. As we pray for those in need, within our friends, family, work colleagues, whoever. You don't always need a minister to do this. You can do it. Jesus will embark now on his amazing ministry of healings, signs and wonders. His authority and power unrivaled and unmatched. 
His fame will spread, but he will not let it go to his head. Instead, he will continually seek the lowest position, the servant and the slave, seeking out the poor, the sinner and the outcast, to bring the kingdom to them. Well, may the Lord help us to have a better understanding of the power and authority that is available to us as Christians and for us to exercise that same power and authority, bringing the kingdom of God to any who have a need. Turn to our order of service as we respond to the word of God. Let us confess the faith of the church. We believe in God the Father who made the world. We believe in Jesus Christ his Son who redeemed humankind. We believe in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God. Come now to our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Let us pray to the Lord, who is indeed our refuge and strength, an ever present help in time of trouble. Lord of compassion, hear us as we pray for those who suffer today, for those in hospital, for those receiving cancer treatment or treatment of whatever kind. And as we have heard this past week, of the number of deaths due to COVID passing 100,000 in the UK, we pray for all who have lost loved ones due to the virus, or indeed for any other reason. For those who have been unable to visit loved ones as they have passed from this life. For those living with grief which seems too hard to bear. Lord God, bring your compassion to bear on those for whom loss feels unbearable. And we remember especially this past week the family of Joe Corkin, whose, family, whose funeral took place on Tuesday past in St. Luke's. We pray for all his family and all who knew and loved Joe. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And Lord, as we have heard this past week, the Prime Minister take responsibility for the huge number of COVID deaths and how the government has responded to the pandemic, we pray for him, for his government, and indeed for our own executive, and for all who are in authority over nations and peoples. We pray for guidance and wisdom in decision making, for those who carry the heavy burdens of such responsibility, that they would not be overcome and overwhelmed, that they would not be overcome with guilt, which is not theirs to bear, that you would bless and protect all in such positions and that they would act always with integrity and honesty, seeking to help those in greatest need. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. hear us. And today, as we reflect on Holocaust Memorial Day this past week, we pray for survivors of the Holocaust in Nazi Germany, for genocide in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia and Darfur, for all those whose memory of its awfulness and desolation still haunts, still hurts, and still torments. We pray for all that in their darkness they may see and know your light of love. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear, hear us. Lord God, so many are struggling and suffering through this lockdown. Single mums and dads with little or no access to finance or resources to adequately provide remote learning for their kids. So many feeling isolated and imprisoned in their homes. We pray for all who feel this way. We pray that you would move through the local church to motivate and mobilize those who are willing to seek out those in greatest need and to meet the need in whatever practical and helpful way. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Lord God, our hospitals are places of great stress, anxiety and fear. We pray for all NHS staff in their battle against COVID, against fear, against stress and exhaustion. Bring increased strength and energy to those who need it most. Protect all so that our hospitals will not be overwhelmed 
We pray also for our chaplains in hospitals and in prison. We thank you for the amazing, sometimes unseen, great pastoral support which they provide. Uphold them, guard and guide them through these challenging days. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. us. Lord, be with us in our time of need. As many who suffer are seeking hope, may we see a turning in our nations to your Son, Jesus, the only source of true hope. Hope for the present, hope for the future, and hope for eternity. Revive our nations again, and may your kingdom power and authority be evident in our churches, our communities, our cities, and our world. We commend ourselves, and for all whom we pray, to the mercy and protection of God. Amen. The collect for this, the fourth Sunday after Epiphany. Creator God, who in the beginning commanded the light to shine out of darkness, we pray that the light of the glorious gospel of Christ may dispel the darkness of ignorance and unbelief shine into the hearts of all your people and reveal the knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ our Lord Amen we join all our prayers together the words our Saviour taught us so we pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We come to the close of our service and our closing hymn. The hymn we're singing is hymn number 513 in our hymnal. O Christ the healer, we have come to pray for health, to plead for friends. How can we fail to be restored when reached by love that never ends?
some words of blessing as we close. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church and to the nations, peace and concord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with us and those whom we love this day and forevermore. Amen. The Lord bless us and protect us and, and share an abundance of life in your name.